Lee, thank you so much for joining us here at Super Return International. Thank you for having us again. It's great to see you. Yes. A year on, a lot's happened. Where are we at in terms of investment management at the moment? What are the key trends that you're seeing? Yeah, no, it's definitely been an interesting year. Um, you know, last year at the conference, there was a lot of talk about it being the golden year for private credit specifically. And typically when we talk about golden years of things, that usually means they're never going to last. And certainly we have not seen that last. I mean, generally it's been a year where a lot of people were thinking we were going to have a recession, particularly in the U.S. over the course of the last year. And that's kept getting extended out. And certainly we haven't seen that. So we've seen the tightening in more regularly, broadly syndicated credit markets. Um, that's an area where we're seeing a little bit less value as of right now, given that tightening. So where we tend to be spending most of our time is in more esoteric markets today, a little bit less liquid markets. So the, the four key areas we're spending time right now are one in the distress space, where we're continuing to see, even though defaults are low, and I think we're going to talk about that, we're still seeing the opportunity to find some companies that we take through a bankruptcy process. Again, in the private credit space, we're finding some things to do, less like what we saw last year, a little bit, again, more esoteric in nature. Uh, we're finding things to do, particularly in the structured products area, uh, where we're seeing capital relief trades for banks. That's been very popular here in Europe and is now shifting a lot to the U.S. And then the other major area is really on the opportunistic credit side. Uh, that's an area of focus where, again, as default rates remain low, we are seeing a lot of dispersion in markets, and that's keeping us busy. And then the final area, which is a little bit different and new, is really on the real estate side. So not on distressed real estate, but really lending into the real estate space, because similar to what we talked about in private credit last year, where banks are exiting that business, it's really an area where alternative managers like Golden Tree could come in and be providing capital in, a, in an area where you know, there's not a lot of competition currently. From what you've described there, you're working hard for your money at the moment, trying uh, yes, to find all those, those avenues. Sure. Uh, you talked about the distress cycle mm -hmm. and default rates. Uh, how does the increase in that sort of liability management exercises that you're having to go through impact what you're doing and the opportunities that are created through that? Yeah, so definitely this cycle is different than any other cycle we've seen on the distress side. Typically in any environment, and it, it certainly feels like a late cycle environment, although it's felt late cycle for the last several years at this point in time, typically what you get is default rates tend to rise to about 10%. Uh, they're currently about 3%. But how we think this cycle is different is that given the amount of capital that's available in the markets, we do not see default rates really rising to where they were historically. What we're thinking this cycle is default rates raise a little bit, so from about 3% now to 4 or 5% but they stay at that level for several years. And really, as you mentioned, it's a function of what we've seen as these liability management exercises, which honestly, the simplest way of saying that is it's a restructuring of balance sheet without actually going through a bankruptcy process. So what that's done is it's allowed companies to just extend their lifeline. If you're a private equity sponsor and you're having a company that's struggling, you put a Band-Aid on it and hope in two years it can fix itself or interest rates go down. Ultimately, time will tell because of all the liability management exercises we've seen in the last five years, about a third of them have actually ended up in bankruptcy anyways. So really is what we've been thinking is that you're going to see this as a typical distress cycle, but more extended in nature. And instead of just being busy for one year, we're going to be busy for three or four years. And that's really how the cycles change and you know, the result of the liability management that we're seeing. Moving on, we've seen regulation lead to an increase in, yep. in, in bank capital relief transactions. Very complex with the sourcing, underwriting and, and, and structuring involved. So how is Golden Tree capitalizing on that opportunity at the moment? Yeah, so I'd say similar to, as we talked about private credit last year was the golden year for private credit. I, I think there's been a lot of talk about risk transfer, synthetic risk transfer. It's been here in Europe for over 20 years, given some of the Basel or the changes in the Basel regulation. And we've been very active in the European market doing these transactions. We tend to do less of just regular corporate transactions, more esoteric transactions. But what's most exciting is that in the US specifically, now the Fed has given you know, an okay to start to see these transactions. It's been a relatively slow start, but as we look into the fourth quarter of this year and into 2025, the expectation is that you're gonna see as much or even more of this activity in the US as you have seen here in Europe. So over 150 to $200 billion. Uh, similar to my initial comment, they tend to be 
very esoteric transactions. They're bilateral. They take a long time to get through. But ultimately, what we're able to do is to create or take assets and create yields that are in the mid to high teens. So in an environment where high yield spreads are at 300 over yielding 8%, you know, to pick up 1,000 basis points. And really, it's a similar in private credit. It's a smaller market of the type of people that can do these types of transactions. So this is an area as a firm we've been staffing up. And we're looking at sort of, you know, really 2025 being a big opportunity set more in the U.S. as we look for these opportunities specifically. You talk about staffing up. So you yeah. are a firm that looks to specialize in those areas and find the right teams for that. Yes. So, I mean, definitely in the structural products area, when we look at the history of the firm at Golden Tree, we're uh, celebrating our 25th anniversary next year, which is which is very exciting. Uh, we started our structural products team back in 2007. You know, it's now 10 people. Our total investment team is now close to 100 people at this point in time. And then similarly, as I mentioned, on the real estate side, that's an area that we're actively looking to add talent as we think it's a natural progression for the firm and you know, similar to a lot of the other things we've done on the lending side over the last 25 years. With that talented team, as you described yeah. them, do you find opportunities where perhaps others see disruption? So things like media tech, healthcare, you know, some might say they're areas to avoid because it's so sort of, uh, you know, un un unpredictable what's going to happen there. But would you say that's an opportunity and something you look for and relish to, to being in? Yeah, no, I, I think as we look at ourselves as a firm, what we tend to think that we do best is areas that are more difficult. So we like to roll up our sleeves, do a lot of the hard work. But generally, we've been very prepared for those sectors because when you look at every cycle, wherever there has been the most level of issuance over the last decade, that tends to be where you have the most disruption or the most level of distress or defaults. And if you look back, all the sectors that you mentioned, whether it's technology, media, telecom, healthcare, those have all been the biggest areas of issuance in the last 10 years across credit markets. So now in this high interest rate environment, in a space like healthcare, while it's a stable from an economic perspective, they're dealing with their balance sheets and having to deal with much higher interest rates. Compare that to, as you mentioned, the media telecom space where it seems like everybody's getting rid of their cable provider now. There's disruption on the media side. Uh, there's disruption on the uh, distribution side with you know how people are getting their content. So there's different challenges in each of those sectors, but thankfully across the markets we look at, there's hundreds of billions of dollars of opportunities. And as we think about an environment where, whether it's on the distress side, the private credit side, there's a lots of ways to kind of attack that, which is which is great for us as a firm. And you as you said, very busy as well, also too. A which very is good. positive outlook. Uh, you know, I tend to be an optimist, even in a you know in in areas where there's, uh, although you know, for us being an optimist is finding opportunities. So I think that's what's exciting about it. Is there, are, you know, even in a market as I mentioned where spreads seem to look very tight. I can't remember a period, you know, I've been at the firm almost 20 years where we've been busier and, you know, really how deep we get into these opportunities, which is good. A well-informed so, optimist, let's put it like uh, that. That's good. <laughs> Lee, thank you so much for joining us. Great. Great to talk to you.